I can remember the first time that I saw this woman. And if beauty could be quantified and contained, placed within one person, then she had it all. And I didn't see her for the first time strolling towards me across a grassy knoll while sunlight filtered through the trees, highlighting all the accents of her hair. No, I saw this woman at the gym. And she was grunting, lifting weights, rivulets of sweat running down her face into her eyes so that she had to blink them furiously to see, but she was the most stunning person that I had ever seen. But I didn't approach her there. Not then, because she wasn't at the gym for me. She was there because she had some ideal for her body that she wished to attain, or maybe she just wanted to enjoy an extra margarita or two with her friends that night at the bar, and me not wanting to continue to codify the patriarchy or take advantage of my male privilege, I left her alone. <laughs> but sometimes, she would look over at me and she would wave, and I would wave shyly back. Or she would smile at me and I made sure my bicep curls looked real good that day. <laughs> and I must have done an incredible set because she came up to me and she said, hey, can you spot me? Can I spot you? <laughs> Baby girl, yeah, I can spot you, is what I should have said. <laughs> but what I said instead was, no problem, bro. Bro, hmm. But I must have been the best spotter this side of creation because shortly afterwards when we were finished and I was heading towards the exit doors, she came walking up to me and asked, would you like to grab a drink <laughs> with you? A woman, you the type of person I want to bring home and introduce to my mama, yes! Bro. <laughs> but before I continue, now, with the glaring reality of hindsight staring me so blindly in the face, the reason, the one true reason, the cross my heart and hope to die, bury me down by the seashore reason that I did not ask this woman that was because what if I did? And she said yes. And then she began to like me, and I started to like her, and a few days, a few weeks, maybe a month or so down the road, she would come up to me full of frustrated, aching need and go, I like you. I know you like me. So why are we fucking? And I would have to remove her deft hands away from my belt buckle, lift her nimble fingers from my zipper and go, baby, wait, baby, one second, baby, please. I ain't got no dick, boo. <laughs> and I had never had that conversation with a woman before. And what if I did it wrong? Or what if I waited too long? Or what if I began to fall in love? And when she found out, what if she left? There were so many what ifs. But I wasn't thinking about that right then. No, I was excited. I know I broke about a million laws in the way to this bar. I was speeding, click it or ticket. What is that? I didn't put my seatbelt on and I know I was texting my best friend just to let him know what had happened. And when we got to the bar, the cacophony of sounds, the press of bodies, but I got us a table. We had a table. <laughs> And the two of us sat down, and we began to talk over our drinks. And she was into me. <laughs> I could tell she was into me. She was leaning forward and playing with her hair, biting her lower lip, running her fingers down the delicate flesh of her neck. But here is the thing. I am a man of words. Words have been my salvation as long as I can remember. The light at the end of a tunnel I never thought that I could reach. Words lifted me from the valley to the mountaintop so that I could see. And I just needed to know if words could make her soul sing too. If it knew the musical harmonies of her spirit. And so I had one question. Just one thing I needed her to answer. And so I asked, what are your favorite books? And she hesitated, and I got excited. Because a reader, a real reader, has more than one favorite book. They have more than one favorite genre. And here was this woman in front of me who had read so many novels, so many poems, that she couldn't pick just one. And she opened her mouth and she said to me, boy, you're so silly, I don't read. <laughs> Pause. 
pause. <laughs> and just like that, her siren song became a banshee's well. And I found myself tossed into the sea of confusion, capsized, shipwrecked, and thrown onto the rocky shore of disillusionment because how could it be? How could a woman as seemingly incredible as she sit here in my face and say, boy, I don't read? <laughs> and so I'm not sure if it was because I was no longer as attracted or as enamored, but I just said it. Well, I'm trans. <laughs> <laughs> As if my being transgender, a secret of which I am not ashamed, and her not reading a secret she should be incredibly ashamed of, <laughs> were somehow equal. And she said to me, well, what does that mean? Well, it means I was female assigned at birth, and now I take testosterone, and here I am. So you don't have a penis? No. Well, what happened to it? What, what happened to it? As if I got on the bus one day and set it down and forgot to pick it back up. Or I was sent marching off to war and I fell victim to a penile IED. My God, woman, you really don't read, do you? But the thing is, she, she didn't have a problem with me being trans. In fact, she would often say, well, I like you. <laughs> but after a few more dates, I'm the one that called it quits. Because the two of us, she and I, we didn't really go together. We didn't quite fit, and even still, if I could find this woman that my friends to this day call bookless, <laughs> I would thank her because if it wasn't for her I would still believe that my relationships would end or fail to begin because of the physicality of my body and that just isn't true my relationships have suffered the same fate that all relationships do maybe I'm not into you or you're not into me or perhaps the chemistry isn't initially what we thought what it seemed to be or maybe we were just two people clinging to one another on an island of loneliness until we built our raft and found our way back to the continent of humanity and then we parted ways <laughs> and all of these things they are far more than okay and so wherever you are Brooklyn. Wherever you happen to be, thank you. Because now I have the courage to approach a woman and say, hello, my name is Morgan, and I love to read. <laughs>